My name is Victoria Heinz. Okay, now it's recording. Um, I'm a research assistant and PhD student at Stuttgart Media University. I'm working for the research department CREAM, which is an abbreviation for Creative Industries and Media Society. And we're um, basically analyzing the creative industries in general and their effects on economy and society. And today I will lead the session on our first thematic group that Brit already mentioned in her um, presentation. Um, and I will give you some insights on empty floor spaces and how to deal with them. We'll for sure talk about our curl toolbox that we developed collaboratively with all partners in the consortium. Um, and we will show three um, best practice examples from this thematic group from Gratzice, Resnita and Herrenberg a town near West Stuttgart, and uh, I will have some support also uh, for this, this presentations. Uh, Teresa Pankova, the communication manager at the Agency for Regional Development Support at Kosice in Slovakia. Teresa will uh, present uh, the results of the pilot activities in Kosice. And also we have Ildiko Pataki here, who's the education policy advisor for the municipality of Resita in Romania, and she will share you some insights from the pilot project in Resita. Okay, so I will just start sharing my and we'll move directly into presentation mode. I hope you can all see my screen. work okay so uh, just quickly a reminder if you haven't named yourself uh, and put the organization afterwards please do it right now um, and also just remind you please keep your microphone muted uh, if you have any questions during the presentation just place them into the chat and we will at the end of this presentation just look over your question and try to answer all of them okay uh, a quick view on the agenda for this session. Uh, I will start with very quickly um, sharing some insights of the thematic group, the objectives that we have, the vision uh, of this specific group. Then we'll go on with presenting the three mentioned best practice examples of this group. And in the end, um, I will give you an overview of the CUR toolbox that we've created, the Creative Urban Visualization Toolbox and just explain you a little bit how to use uh, this digital toolbox. And in the end, I prepared some takeaways for you and uh, colleagues in the room to have a Q&A session with you to clear all questions. Okay. Um, let's start with the objectives of this specific thematic group, floor space concepts. So the vision for this group was to create new, create a floor space concept for any kind of empty space. We don't, didn't focus on any specific type of empty spaces, so we're very open. And we for sure wanted to revive the inner city with this new creative floor space concept. The objectives behind that is uh, where to develop supporting tools that would help us within the implementation process. And for sure, there should be tools for the assessment of floor space, for creative communication and marketing, and also creative industries services to help them to build their business. And uh, yeah, we wanted to for sure also to strengthen economic development and for sure empower the local creative industries and therefore improve the quality of life for the whole city, for a lot of citizens. Um, and uh, we had as mentioned three cities um, that interact in this thematic group. The project teams from Resita, Kosice, and Herrenberg. The background, just to quickly repeat what actually we've already said, um, why we're doing that. So, uh, we recognized in the last year uh, a big degrees of owner led retail and small businesses uh, in inner city centers. Therefore, the result is that we have too much deserted centers, especially in small and medium sized towns. The reasons for that, I think, are very clear. The economic transformation, changing consumer behavior, um, doing more online shopping, and for sure, the current COVID crisis uh, didn't help with these problems and make it even worse now. So 
Now we will start with the presentation of our best practice examples and show you some ways how we deal with this challenging situation in inner cities. And we will start the pilot project in Kosice. And I will hand over the word to um, Theresia, who is part of the team and who can share best uh, what have been the results of this pilot project. Theresia, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you for the introduction. The first important question, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's the first interaction. Great, you are <laughs> awake still. Um, so yeah, as Victoria presented, my name is Theresia. Good morning to everyone. Uh, well, I'll try to be brief as we don't have that much time to present what we kind of piloted, what kind of activities uh, in this project. Um, I inserted the map. So for those who don't know, Kashice is located in the eastern part of Slovakia. And uh, also this city is also well known for IT sector and creative industry. It's very important for our well city economy and so on. And next slide, please. Uh, yeah, here. So um, now you can see the photos of the old building. That's a former tobacco factory. That's also our pilot location in the project. And uh, it's near the city center, um, as well as the owner is the um, Koshice self-governing region. Um, this building will be reconstructed and transformed into the creative center of the Koshice region, which is a big deal for us. Uh, so we focus our activities around building the creative uh, community around the future creative center by basically um, developing and te testing so-called well two tools. The first is uh, building a space for creative learning communities, and the second is um, well the internships where we tried to you know establish new connections through the this tool. Okay, next slide, please. Um, okay, so the first tool that I would like to present is basically a research and community building tool. Um, well, we, we tried to listen and analyze the needs of the um, different target groups. So we organized workshops with actually 11 focus groups. Um, those groups were stakeholders and potential future users of the, you know, future creative center. So, uh, so those were some students, entrepreneurs, creatives, and so on. Um, so we analyzed the data and based on the analysis, we have created so-called uh, representative biographies, which show a clear definition of the key actors and their roles uh in the implementation of creative center so well they know who is who and and who has like which role and so on and also the maps of meaning which basically reflect the needs of the stakeholders partners and potential future users of that space um and then we got the uh, feedback uh, on the results from the expert group so lots of meetings and feedbacks were um, included in this tool uh, and basically from what we kind of what we were aiming is that through understanding the needs roles and relationships um, this clearly formulated result of the analysis uh, should help the future management of the creative center um, and those results will be also promoted online and offline in a, like a visual form of toolbox. So that's like what it was not about. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll just share quickly what we learned. Um, well, participants were really well, they reacted positively on being part of the focus groups and being able to express their needs. So yeah, they were just glad to, you know, express everything, their opinions and in relations to the implementation of the creative center. So yeah, that's really good to, you know, um, implement those, well, 
you know, the public and then, yeah, focus groups. And also it's important to have a skilled facilitator. It really has to be someone really good who can communicate clearly and effectively with different types of stakeholders. We had creative people in the group. We had like uh, municipalities, we had uh, educational organizations. So you should adjust your style and a workshop a bit. Uh, and third is that um, having data from the focus groups analyzed uh, and processed in the clear form is useful and basically powerful for communication um, and kind of justification of the decision making in relation to the community building uh, process. So yeah, that's very quickly what we learned. In case you have questions, you can ask, but now let's move on. So what we also implemented uh, were internships. That's another uh, kind of supporting tool. So this summer we implemented nine internships in four cultural organizations. As you can see, those were um, galleries as well as well library and local kind of underground cinema. Uh, and the aim, as you can see, was to kind of include, um, you know, young people and the new viewpoint and then also to create this network uh, and, and to share new ideas and, and, and to learn a lot. So we were trying to also build a creative community in Košice this way. And I will not go like I will not explain the process as, as you can imagine uh, how it looked like. Um, but basically, uh, we mm, had an open call for organizations to join and then open call for interns well, potential interns to join. Uh, and we can move on to what we learned. Uh, yeah, on the picture, you can see two interns and two representatives of the gallery, one, one of the galleries that we have in Košice. So what we learned is that it's very attractive for young creatives. Actually, we received much more applicants that we could uh, kind of accept. So we planned to have three interns and instead we had nine. So yeah, we, we wanted to, uh, at the end, we accepted more people into the process. So as you can see, it's very, very kind of attractive somehow to young creatives. Uh, and also it's important to have open communication also before the internships, uh, also with the organizations and the good expectation settings. So everyone is on the same page and everyone knows what, what people are accept, ex expecting. And also it's good to have a clear plan of activities, uh, of course. That's like kind of obvious, but many organizations, especially cultural organizations don't have it. So that's, that's really important. And also interns, um, well, from the feedbacks, we see that interns asked for more space for implementing their ideas. So we learned that it's good to give the space to young people and yeah, they really want to um, bring something new. So uh, that's, I guess, all from me. I think, yeah, there is, I will give a space to Reshita now. So thank you for your attention. And in case you have some questions, you can ask, I guess, later on, right, Victoria, in case you have space for that. I hope we'll try to manage to have a short question. <laughs> yeah. uh, all questions can be placed in the chat and we'll clear them afterwards also. Yeah. Maybe, yeah and Enrico will stay in the session to answer your yeah. questions. Yeah. So okay, feel sorry. free to write something and thank you once again. Thank you for a nice presentation, Teresa, and also explaining how you used our career tools to succeed also in implementation of your pilot project. Okay, um, great. Then I will hand over next the word to Ildiko, who will share some insights of the pilot activities in Reshita in um, Romania. 
Uh, okay, thanks, Victoria, uh, and uh, thanks, Theresia. This was just amazing to go back uh, with this picture in Tabachka. Uh, we have absolutely nice memories from Kosice, but uh, now we invite you to Halaminda. Uh, you can see this is the, our pilot location, and I would like uh, to ask you, Victoria, to go to the slide. Next slide, please. This will be one of uh, the most difficult tasks for me during the project to speak about uh, what we did in two years and I have only five minutes, but I will try. So we planned and we piloted uh, uh, the, the regeneration of our city and our intention is to create a maker space in this hall, a competence center for production of uh, art and the cafeteria for socialization. Next. Yeah. Um, you can see here the, the result of our very first uh, pilot action. We organized an artistic residency. We used this tool. And with the support of the local municipality, uh, which was more than 100,000 of euro, we realized uh, this very first uh, residency, and in December last year, we had the first exposition of the six uh, monumental sculpture in metal. Metal is very important for uh, us, for our uh, dark heritage in metal industry. Uh, the pilot, uh, the pilot activities gave us uh, a very, very excellent space for uh, reflection support us to understand what is happening around us, to redesign, to rethink the plan of uh, regeneration of the city. And based on this uh, reflection, we get the courage to apply for the UNESCO Learning City title and uh, as well for the new European Bauhaus program. And yes, we get the certificate of membership we are the first Romanian city joining the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities. And um, one of uh, our uh, flagship project was the cinema in, uh, in this process. Next, please. And uh, for the new European Bauhaus, we presented the Minda experience as uh, redesigning a formal industrial site into a living place. And we can get the support of uh, one year, uh, technical assistance, and we are dealing with uh, this support uh, just now. So uh, we realized again, and this is our conclusion that the municipality is and, and can be the driver for uh, the community development of our city. And we realized uh, as well from the experience we shared with our uh, partners uh, as Košice, uh, Slovenia and other cities that is very important to respect our heritage and it's possible to respect your heritage and go as well towards the cultural and creative sector and apply new technologies. And we are ready to share our results, uh, our experiences as well with other small municipalities. Um, we are looking forward and uh, we have uh, the benefit uh, get from the new European Bauhaus. Based on this, we are revising the concept development to the feasibility study. We used the Halaminda as a pilot and as a starting point for future projects. We are going to revitalize other former industrial buildings in, in the city. Next, please. And you can see some uh, pictures from the second edition of the artistic residency. We are now uh, delivering, making the projects and the cultural creative sector is in force to uh, presenting the project for these new sculptures. We are going to be placed, built and placed around, uh, around Halaminda. Yeah, thanks so much.
Thank you so much as well, Adeko, for the nice presentation. It was also very lovely to visit Casita just recently to see what you just created there in Halaminda. And we are very excited, as Margit already mentioned, to come back in probably one year to see uh, what you saw. You are welcome. <laughs> Okay, then I will uh, continue with presenting some results of our pilot project in Herrenberg, uh, a city, as I mentioned, very close um, to Stuttgart. And just to mention that uh, right now, um, we have very closely collaborated with the Stuttgart Region Economic Development Agency, uh, a special market, um, and the city of Herrenberg um, to implement our pilot project. So, um, we developed a concept called Chameleon Spaces. This was actually the result of a virtual hackathon we have conducted at the beginning of 2021. We had uh, very interdisciplinary um, teams, three teams, um, consisting of HDM students and startups, but also representatives from Herrenberg, from gastronomy, retail, or the local creative industries. And uh, one team, the winning team, developed a concept of chameleon spaces. And we knew that we want to implement this concept. For sure, we needed to further develop it a little bit also with our car chameleon space team, the winning team. But this was the plan. And to explain you a little bit the concept, uh, it is a very hybrid concept. It merges together four core areas, retail, gastronomy, new work, and arts and culture. And what is very important is that we always involve the citizens. So before we did our two pilots, we always reached out to social media, for newspaper, to the local uh, citizens in Herrenberg to ask for any ideas how we can uh, design uh, this, this spaces uh, content-wise. We created always an event program and they could always participate with nice ideas for workshops or any kind of events. Um, the three characteristics we paid attention on uh, comparing our concept with the chameleon are flexible, adjustable, and migratable. So our flow space concept is flexible because just as a chameleon, it can easily adapt spatially within the four sub areas that I just mentioned. And it even may focus more on one of these four sub areas, depends on which kind of empty space it moves in. Our flow space concept is also adjustable because just as a chameleon, it can easily adapt to the spatial conditions and previous use of the vacancy. And it pays attention to any kind of parallel events in the region, such as a summer festival or in winter time, the Christmas market. And also our flow space concept is migratable because just as a chameleon, it can easily and quickly move from one empty space to another and therefore it has the potential to fill in temporary several empty spaces in a city or region and revive the inner center, um, inner city center through that. So we have conducted the uh, virtual hackathon at the beginning of 2021. We knew that we want to do the first testing by the end of the year, somewhere in autumn. Um, so we needed to do something in between, and as we had uh, developed the career toolbox to support these activities, we said we need to implement our first tool, uh, which is the shop window idea. And we transformed the content of this tool a little bit and made a student's project by HDM out of that. Uh, we call this project Creative Retail. And here we basically give some coaching uh, consulting to the students uh, how to develop stories, um, how to visualize them through media. And then uh, the students reached out to our representatives from Herrenberg, some people we already have been in contact with, coming from gastronomy again, retail or creative industry. And they asked them what connects them to the city, what is their story, how did they build up their business there, and so on. And then they took some, some artifacts, some facts out of the story and created more fictive stories with also fictive heroes. Um, but it was very nice. They really wrote down a whole story and then we helped them uh, figuring out how to visualize it through media. And you can see here three pictures of the three results um, that we had, three groups. The first group, Team A, uh, wanted to visualize the story through a comic drawn with a white uh, paper pen or yeah pen for glasses um, they had a very very big uh, 
empty shop window that they could design. And it was, I think, two days work to finalize this very nice visualization of the story. Then the second team um, decided to split the story in different uh, yeah, kind of scenes. And they wanted to visualize the scenes through uh, Lego stones. So they built up uh, little worlds um, and also this could be showcased in an empty um, shop window. And the last team, Team C, decided to, to visualize the story through posters and also a cardboard with the main character. So very nice idea. Uh, we could definitely raise awareness um, for the stories for the local heroes in Herrenbeck. And we also placed for sure some information on this is connected to a raw space concept called Chameleon Spaces and which will soon come up in Herrenbeck. And then it was uh, about time for the first pilot that we conducted uh, from November to December last year. Uh, four weeks altogether, uh, we moved into an empty traditional pub called Zorosa. And as you can imagine, because it is an old uh, pub, the focus lay here more on the gastronomic part of the concept. So we had even more gastronomic events, um, different lunch offers or uh, any tastings, or for example, an Italian night with Italian music, aperol and pizza, which was very nice. Um, but anyway, also we had some events and things happening from the other core areas. And you can see here, a picture of the main room where you can have lunch or just grab a coffee and sit down and co-work a little bit. We have very good Wi-Fi. Um, then a picture of an event. It was actually the kickoff event uh, for this pilot and uh, a small yeah, insight into the uh, more smaller pop-up area that we have where we also sold uh, products from local creatives. Okay. First pilot done, uh, actually I didn't mention it, it wasn't that easy because as you can imagine, this was just in the middle of the pandemic, we had a lot of restriction to pay attention on. Um, and we thought probably we should do a second pilot for a longer time and also more in warmer season because then we pr probably also have more possibilities to design this, this event program and get even more people inside um, the floor space. Uh, so we had again some time, some months uh, where we had the chance to apply a second core tool, which was helping us to develop a sustainable business model of the comedian spaces. Now that we had like first experiences, we thought this would be a good idea also to sh show it to the city and think about how to improve the second um, pilot. And here we also had a student uh, from HDM that helped us out in developing this kind of uh, business model. You can see here the canvas that we use for sustainable business model development. And we also reached out to local uh, homeowners and landlords of empty spaces, because as you know, this is the case for a lot of smaller cities. We have um, some vacancies owned by private people and they're not always that open to, to give the, the floor to any kind of creative, more innovative concept because they think it's probably too risky, it's not sustainable enough. Uh, so we really wanted to reach out also to those homeowners and landlords in Herrenberg uh, just to, to also present our uh, developed concept and also ask what needs to be adjusted, what, what are the reasons why they uh, probably don't want to give uh, out their spaces for such concepts and just to add some feedback out of this um, interviews with them to professionalize our concept. And also um, we reached out for sure to some field experts uh, in the region that will be definitely also always supportive uh, when implementing a pilot project like this. Uh, you can see here a picture of Yalma Himan who um, has a communication marketing agency and for sure a lot of communication is necessary to develop such concept in a city. And then it was about time for the second pilot uh, that we conducted from May to July this year, um, altogether 10 weeks. And we moved in into an empty space in a shopping mall. And as you can imagine, because it was a former retail store, we put more focus on the topic of retail. Uh, you can see here in this picture an inside of the bigger retail area that we had. But because we had actually very uh, much space, a lot of premises, we also decided to put a second focus on new work. And you can see here inside of the working space, 
that we established and set the premises. And uh, a very nice picture painted by a local artist, 18-year-old uh, uh, boy, <laughs> I would say a man, but uh, very nicely uh, painted in the, on the wall in the interior. And yeah, I think it was very inspirational for all the users of the space. Okay, um, now we're done with presenting the best practice example out of this thematic group. And uh, I would like to do a quick survey with you on Menti. We'll have two minutes time for that. So please just even either scan this QR code will be directly moved to the, to the survey or um, just uh, take this link. I will also quickly share it with you in the chat. Um, just a second. Okay, now you have also the link in the chat. You can just click on it and then you will be directly moved to the survey. It's only two questions. It would be great if you participate and right afterwards I will share the results with you. We have been mentioning some time uh, already a curve toolbox that we have developed together with all the partners in the cinema project. Uh, it was actually on part of HDM to, um, to help with developing these tools. We have conducted design thinking workshops that also enable the partner to think of more creative new ideas and concepts. And we have all together managed to create 20 curve tools along the three thematic groups that we have. And this digital toolbox is already live and online. You can already use it and get inspired if you will be in any kind of urban uh, revitalization project. And because it is live, I will just quickly jump into this toolbox and explain to you some little things, um, how to use it, what you will find here. So you should now see the curl toolbox. Okay, great. Okay, so this is the main page. Uh, and as I mentioned, we have together developed 20 tools along the three thematic groups that we have, both-based concept, retail and small businesses, and the eye support center. If you click on about cinema, you will also get some information, some basic information on the project or thematic groups and the objectives behind that, and also the links to our uh, cinema project website, the Facebook page or YouTube channel. Uh, and here on the right side, you see who was involved on site of HDM within this project. If you click on create a blog based concept, um, you will find a nice manual. Uh, this is actually a work uh, from my research colleagues and me um, because we have analyzed through the several last years uh, different best practice examples of creative blog based concept. We created uh, all together a uh, small taxonomy, or probably it's not that small, um, but we kind of uh, sorted the different types into categories, for example, innovation lab, co-working space in kind of hybrid models, uh, models that are focusing on social innovation. And then uh, we also included some best practice examples um, as playing cards. So you can always download this manual. You can um, print it and use it for any kind of revitalization project. I think it will provide a lot of inspiration. OK, but coming back to our tools, uh, I will just quickly introduce three tools to you from each group that you have a picture on how we kind of explained it in this website. So if you just move over the card, you will always see the main objective of the tool. And if you click on it, you will find on the right side always a short description of the tool. So this was the shop window idea that I just introduced that we applied for a retail project, which helps uh, with communication of your piloting activities. Um, then you always find the the aim or main objective as well uh, of this tool and uh, quickly explained what are important implementation steps to, to, to pilot, um, yeah, to implement this tool. You will sometimes also find a nice impression of the implementation process uh, and quickly summarize the opportunities of this tool and uh, most important challenges. On the right side, you will see who was in charge of tool development, uh, the location where it has been implemented or tested, um, how long it takes to implement it, 
what could be co possible cost factors, who needs to be involved in the implementation process, and then always also a download area where you first always find the full description of the tool because as you can imagine, uh, you would need more information on uh, get to know how to implement this tool. So here are just like a further explanation on the tool description, the different implementation steps, any kind of comparable best practices that are related to the tools and so on. Okay. And then uh, we sometimes also have some supporting tools. Basically these are design thinking tools, canvases that you can use also optionally uh, when implementing such tool. Okay, let's go back and choose a tool from group two, focusing on retail and small businesses. So this is a tool that has been developed by partners from uh, Kamnik and Leonting and Kaprabo. Um, so basically this is an uh, open call um, to apply for a consultancy voucher for businesses who wish to creatively transform and utilize the vacant space. And also here, just as I mentioned, short description, aim, implementation steps, a nice impression of the open call. And then a last tool from group three, focusing on the CI support center. This is a tool that has been developed by the partners from Reshita and also implemented there. Um, so this tool uh, is comparable to a residency program, kind of artist in residence program. Uh, with regional local artists um, and yeah it helps uh, for the re realization of creative installations that also draw attention to this pilot location that are included also uh, within the concept and address some topics uh, connected to the pilot project. So just let me uh, also mention one thing which I think was very very nice of our partners from Oh, no, it's not this one, just a second. Um, this one here, yeah. Partners from uh, Cosice. Um, they actually also developed their own supporting tools, not based on design thinking. Uh, this one I really like because for sure, uh, if you implement those piloting, uh, these pilot projects, you will need also to do some research. And not all of the partners are kind of like studied researchers. So they develop a manual on how to do, for example, qualitative research if you are not a researcher. And I think uh, this is also a very nice thing to do um, to think of other supporting tools that help within the process of implementing. Okay. So that's so far on the current toolbox. And I will jump back in our main presentation. And now we try one more time the Menti survey. I will quickly check uh, if it works out now to see the result. But anyway, um, just scan one more time this QR code or uh, use the link or the, yeah, the code. I will also again share everything with you in the chat. Just a second. So this is the link. And if you go on menti.com, you can also just get in the code and you will be directly uh, moved to the website. Now I'll just quickly check if it works now.
Okay, um, now we have the results. Uh, a colleague of mine needed to help me out quickly. I'm sorry for that. But um, these are actually the results of our first survey uh, to two questions that we placed. Have you ever been involved in the implementation of a creative floor space concept? And uh, I see, yeah, more of us have been involved, but still a lot of people never been involved, but I hope you take away a lot out of this, uh, this session today for probably a project that will come up in the future. And then we should also see, yeah. The results of the second question, what is your main objective by implementing new creative floor space concepts in the city or region? Uh, revitalization of inner city strategy. Okay, great. Um, majority, yeah, clicked on this answer and the other ones, uh, I think they're all connected actually also to the objective of revitalizing the city for sure, to create a higher visibility for the local CI, creating a meeting place, strengthening the economic power, and for sure create synergies between different kind of people. Great. Then I will quickly show also the results. Sorry that you will see now all of that. I need to do it this way. Um, and I will present quickly also the results for this question. First one, could you imagine using the cinema care toolbox in your next revitalization project? Oh, I'm very happy <laughs> that you say yes. <laughs> would be worse if you, most of us uh, of you have been to know, but 90% uh, is quite a lot. Uh, so very nice to hear from me and also for sure also our partners included in the session um, because we prepared this also not only for our project, but also for you, all other people who will ever be involved in uh, implementing an urban revitalization project. And then Last question, what supporting tools would you need most when implementing an urban revitalization project? Community building, okay. Actually, I was guessing that uh, communication will be the uh, most important answer, but community building is definitely something that needs to be done. Yeah, we also had the situation, I have a pilot project in Herrenberg to keep close communication, interaction with our local people, our core team. Um, and then also any kind of representatives coming from politics, economy, uh, there yeah, need to be a community that is building out of that, uh, that is also in a kind of way sustainable, also afterwards, any kind of project. Okay, then we will go back to the presentation and I will just very quickly give you some Takeaways. Um, Just a short uh, message, two minutes left, then the session is closed. Okay, we need to clear the question. Uh, uh, okay, um, very quickly, takeaways. Um, so if you ever plan to implement an urban revitalization project, uh, as just mentioned, uh, it requires a lot of preparation, a lot of interaction between the partners. If you plan to develop any kind of supporting tools, just as the creative urban revitalization tools, it requires a lot of training on creativity enhancing methods and uh, experts from different fields that help out in this process. And if you ever plan to pilot a new flow space concept, it requires again close cooperation between different people from politics, economy, and society, and from a project manager perspective, I guess market will also agree on that. Uh, you will need a lot of patience and persuasion, a lot of convincing communication work um, to show what is uh, yeah, the value from this project, um, how the city will profit uh, when implementing such new concept. Okay, thank you for your attention. Um, just showing quickly also the emails, always feel free to reach out to us, but I think I will quickly stop this presentation to clear any kind of question that you have. I haven't checked the chat, but probably Mark, did you see any kind of question that came up that we need to answer right now in the last few seconds? No, I didn't. Uh, Birgit was asking for the chat for the Kerr toolbox and Martin provided it thankfully. Great. So um, yeah, okay. all clear. Good. Then we managed it. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the very quick ending. Um, but yeah, it's 
we did so much in this project and we could talk about it for, for hours actually. But thank you for joining this workshop and I hope you take away a lot of things out of that. And we afterwards will also provide presentations to all participants. Feel free to give us feedback, uh, contact us anytime. Thank you so much. Is the fourth biggest city in Upper Austria and is located southwest of the capital of Linz. Now, it, now it's with luck, sorry guys. We looked at the realizations of the same project. The 44 house will establish Third itself time is with as luck. an Upper Austrian best practice for user centered co creation. As Bürgermeisterin is it natürlich wichtig, that my Stadt has the lead. And Leben kommt dann. Uh, wenn Ideen Platz bekommen, wann Menschen Platz bekommen und dann wird das Ganze auch mit Blut gefüllt. Ja? Uh, und ich glaube, es ist einfach ein, eine zentrale Aufgabe einer Stadt uh, zu, zu leben, zu pulsieren uh, und das macht auch dann das Zusammenleben in einer Stadt aus. Wir möchten gerne ein offenes Haus darstellen, uh, das Raum für Innovation bietet, das es erste Anlaufstelle für Menschen, die neugierig sind, die neue Ideen in die Stadt bringen, die ihren Beitrag leisten wollen, dass die Stadt leben kann. Da soll in den Köpfen ganz automatisch das 44er Haus auftauchen und soll so ein bisschen das Sinnbild der Innovation, der Neugierde, der Offenheit der Stadt sein. Pilot-Prozess haben wir zwei verschiedene Formate entwickelt und auch umgesetzt dieses Jahr. Zum einen waren das die Pell-Workshops wo wir Zukunftsthemen ähm, unter dem Motto Wir in Leonding aufbereitet haben und Unternehmerinnen und Wirtschaftlerinnen eingeladen haben, neue Konzepte, Ideen zu entwickeln und Synergien zu schaffen. Der zweite Teil der Umsetzung des Projekts ist der Showteil. Wir haben dazu einen kreativen Präsentationsraum vor dem 44er Haus erschaffen. Ähm, eine ungewartete Telefonzelle, wo sich Kreativwirtschaftlerinnen aus Leonding die manchmal etwas unter dem Radar liegen, die man nicht ganz so auf dem Schirm hat, sich selbst und ihre Arbeiten präsentieren können. Vor allem im Stadtzentrum hat man eine sehr gute Frequenz und jeder, der vorbeigeht, ist kurz interessiert, schaut sich das an und da kann jeder Unternehmer sehr gut sich selbst präsentieren und das vorstellen, was er macht und so vielleicht neu kommen. Gerade für kleinere Unternehmen ist es sehr wichtig, dass sie irgendwo eine Plattform finden, wo sie sich präsentieren können, wo sie sich vorstellen können, weil es vielleicht nicht so bekannt ist. Da ist die Telefonzelle ideal und wird sicher die Frequenz für kleinere Unternehmen im Zentrum steigen. Gerade als Kreativunternehmerin ist es so, dass man am Anfang der Tätigkeit nicht unbedingt überall Plattformen hat, seine Produkte zu präsentieren. Und von daher ist es ganz wichtig, solche Projekte zu haben, wo man die Möglichkeit eben hat, seine Produkte, seine Leistungen zu präsentieren. Also die Telefonzelle schaut muss ich sagen, sensationell gut aus. Also ich ich habe schon natürlich gewusst im Vorfeld von den, von den Beschreibungen her, von den Layouts, von der Grafik her, wie es ungefähr aussehen wird, aber in echt übertrifft es natürlich total die Erwartungen. Und, äh, der Actionplan äh, ist jetzt dazu da, dieses Feuer am Lodern zu halten, also nicht nur ähm, das zu entzünden, sondern so wie äh, die olympische Flamme eben weiterzutragen und das zu etablieren und in einen, ich sage jetzt, klingt ganz altmodisch, aber in einen Regelkreis zu überführen, der dann auch das institutionalisiert und ganz klar macht, hier ist unser Platz in Leonding und hier ist Innovation willkommen. Dann sind wir ein Projekt, geht es uns darum, Branchen mit Kreativwirtschaft zu vernetzen, Kreativwirtschaft sichtbar zu machen. Wenn immer man solche neue Wege geht, ist es ganz wichtig, auch offen zu sein und Vertrauen zu haben. Und wenn Dinge mal nicht so funktionieren, wieder zu probieren, diese sogenannte Try and Error Kultur ist uns ganz, ganz wichtig gewesen und sagen ja, nicht den Kopf in den Sand zu setzen und zu stecken, sondern wieder neu zu probieren und ja, das Pflänzchen Kreativwirtschaft in der Stadt Leonding behutsam und gut wachsen zu lassen. Das Thema Sprachen, Leerstand und Wiederbelebung ist für uns als Standortagentur, aber auch für das Land Oberösterreich ein ganz großer Schwerpunkt. Wenn wir neue Instrumente im Zuge eines EU-Projektes zum Einsatz bringen, ist es uns wichtig, dass diese Instrumente so ausgereift sind, damit wir sie auch künftig duplizieren können. Am Beispiel Leonding hat sich ganz klar gezeigt, wie wichtig es ist, die breite Bevölkerung in solche Prozesse mit einzubeziehen, denn die wollen mitwirken und mitgestalten.
Die positive Rückmeldung der oberösterreichischen KMUs, aber auch die Rückmeldung der regionalen Stakeholder hat uns gezeigt, dass wir hier definitiv am richtigen Weg sind. Also für uns äh, in der Business Upper Austria äh, war das Projekt Cinema ein tolles Best Practice Beispiel, weil äh, die Zusammenwirkung zwischen äh, Gemeindepolitik, Wirtschaft und Kreativität optimal umgesetzt wurde. Wir hoffen, dass Sie mit uns in Verbindung bleiben, entweder auf unserer Webseite, bei dem, mit dem Newsletter oder auch mit unseren Social Media Kanälen. So, I think that's the sign for starting uh, the breakout session too. Thanks also uh, for you to join this, this breakout session. Uh, yeah, as Charles inspired us uh, on see the city, feel the city, um, and I think we are really curious on how unique shop concepts, uh, concept stores, pop-up shops give really the city a face and an identity and uh, make, make us go to the city and uh, enjoy the city and have uh, memorable experiences in the city if it's a small city, a bigger city, or a metropolitan area. So it doesn't depend on the size of the city, but uh, the experience has to be memorable and unique. And um, how three of our cities uh, walked through this path and uh, made the cities more livable with uh, retail and small business, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the city of Leonding and Hannah Silva from the uh, Business Upper Austria Wirtschaftsagentur, who will present the path uh, to, to uh, more livable cities in Leonding. Um, yeah, as well as Britt Ackermann, my co facilitator, as well as project leader, as well as uh, uh, presenting the city of Kamnik. Uh, on her uh, on its way to to making the city more creative as well as Boyana from Studio Complet uh, showcasing us how Gapovo went through this path. Um, and we like also like to engage you all. That means uh, we prepared um, um, a mentee. So please, Crit, can you also share shortly the uh, presentation or we'll start to share the presentation? Oh, yeah. Uh, you should see it by now. Is it okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I just thought... passed over this uh, just to show wh where we want to go, but I think it's not that inspiring the Charles presentation. So mm -hmm. uh, we want you to get active. That means if you have got questions, uh, please uh, ask them via the chat and after the uh, presentation. And we also invite you uh, to take part in a mentee survey we prepared for you. And uh, you see in the next slide, the um, Sorry, we can we can only, or I can only see it in the presentation, uh, not, not in presentation mode. <laughs> or is it wrong with me? No, no, it's, you're right. We cannot see it properly. Oh, thank you. Okay, so during Crit is preparing the presentation, would I explain you? Um, as we are. Now. Yeah, thank you, great. Now. Um, for the mentee, you have both ways to enter. On the one way, you can enter the the uh, uh, the, the address uh, Frit mentioned above, but you can also do a photo with your mobile and uh, scan the QR code and have the other device. That's the way I like to do mentees. Just scan the barcode and the session uh, password. And then you are asked question, uh, one question after each presentation. And in the end, we are presenting the results and it's we are curious on your answers. Uh, it's not complicated. We, start from with very simple questions where you come from which organizations you are but we are also uh, like to encourage the discussion what are the challenges in, in transforming and transisting uh, your cities and um, yeah I would like to also to learn from your experiences so uh, getting started I'd like to introduce Hannah Silva uh, from the business 
Upper Austrian Agency, who also yeah, supported the city of Leonding in its transformation process the last two years. Yes, thanks, Gisa. So as Gisa already said, my name is Hannah Silva. I'm project manager at Business Upper Austria, which is the location agency um, in Upper Austria. And today I'm happy to talk about our pilot activities in Leonding. The aim within the cinema project uh, is to awaken up the 44 house, which you can actually see on the slide. It's the blue house in, this, in the uh, city center of Leonding. Uh, the aim is to build up a vibrant, frequented and attractive platform for the future city development. And there the vision is uh, that in the 44 house, uh, local businesses, retailers can present themselves, connect with other businesses and creative industries to try new things and prototype, but also to, and most importantly, to collaborate. Therefore, the project team consisting of us as Business Upper Austria, as the um, um, location agency of Upper Austria and the city of Leonding to work together to reach this goal. First, thank you, thank you, Grit. <laughs> First, we organized a workshop with relevant stakeholders from Leonding in order to um, gather the most promising, promising and impactful ideas to, to transform the city center. The master plan behind the piloting process was to seed and plant the ideas and watch them grow and show the results always with retailing, small businesses, small SMEs and creatives in mind. That's why the piloting was divided into three main steps, steps which I won't now talk about more. The first main step was the grow phase, or as it was written here, the tell phase. No, sorry, thank you. <laughs> there we organized um, four different co-creation workshops in the 44 house. And um, to encourage uh, cooperation and collaborate, collaborative ideas between creatives, uh, creative minds, SMEs, and uh, yeah. <laughs> the workshops uh, were dedicated to regional production, cross innovation, tradition and innovation, and social innovation, with experts in each field as key speakers. As key speakers. Actually, on these pictures, you can see um, um, how uh, the workshops were um, organized. Um, we tried to have it outside, but of course, the weather wasn't always on our side, so we also, ha also had it inside of the 44 house. So coming to the next step, Crit, um, the, sh the show phase, thank you. The second um, step um, looked like the following. We, ha um, we developed a mobile exhibition space placed in front of the 44 house with an external creative. The creatively transformed phone booth, which you can see um, on the right side, um, the, like, this is the, the end of the, of the phone booth, um, showcases so-called hidden champions of creative industries in Leonding and gives them the opportunity to show their work and pieces to the public for a defined amount of time. And within the last step of piloting process, of the piloting process, we really realized that there was a need for a further step. And which you can see on the next slide, um, the idea was to bring in these concrete ideas from the tell and from the curve phase uh, into action. That's why we created the so-called do phase where framework for support of the implementation of concrete ideas was given during an enabler workshop. And although the project cinema has now come to an end and we are already at the final conference, uh, we don't see our activities and supporting for a vital city center in Leonding as finished, but more as a beginning in further development. So on the next step, on the next slide, uh, you see our vision, which we want to realize in Leonding, in the 44 house. The 44 house should be a place for creativity, innovation, sustainability, and regionality. Um, and the local action plan, which has been already developed, uh, waits now for implementation in Leonding. So thanks, this was actually 
all from our side. If there are any questions, I think we have time after, but or, of course, if there are already questions now, um, please just ask. Otherwise, I would hand over again back to Gisa. Yeah, thank you, Hannah, for your insights. Um, are there any questions on the uh, steps of Leonding, how they implemented more creativity, more culture in the city center? Or some comments on it? If not, actually, we also have time. I think we have another um, 30 minutes in this session to have a uh, discussion later on. And 35. Please, 35. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Bianca, for keeping the time. And in the meanwhile, uh, Grit reminds you again, please uh, answer the Menti question, which organizational background do you all have? So that's not the second question. Uh, you will get a new question after each presentation. So the first one was uh, in the beginning. Now you are... Um, when you refresh the website, you are getting the, the second question now. Um, for those who joined newly, you just scan the QR code or go to Mentimeter and enter the session number in the very top of the website. So you can um, then get uh, uh, collaborate with, with us in, in, in this way. So because I thought there was a new person joined just no. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, Crit, for reminding. And as you also have your microphone on, I will give also pass the word to you. Uh, yeah, to tell us a little more, more on the Kamnik experience. Thank you, Gisa. So I'm going to present you the uh, a few examples of how we in, in Kamnik um, uh, revitalized the old town city center with the support of the Coelus sector. So uh, first, what was the challenge? Of course, as I already mentioned, we have in Kamnik, um, actually in the old time, there are more than 60 empty buildings that are small medieval houses. And uh, they were, most of them, as I said, uh, they were uh, either empty or were rented for other purposes like storage, for instance, and, uh, but they were not used for, you know, um, any services or, or retail that would attract businesses. So the challenge was that um, we actually attract businesses to that a really long time empty floor business, uh, uh, spaces that are not on the market. So, you know, they were, um, they, it, was, it would have been difficult to rent them as they were not in, in, in this offer. And we discussed with the municipality also which, which uh, streets to include, uh, which buildings would be great. Uh, to have, um, they were of strategic importance in the city center. And on the other hand, the um, municipality would also like with the, uh, to influence a little bit on the mix of retail and businesses that is available in the city center. So to be more um, directed towards visitors, attracting visitors and, and tourists. So that was the challenge that uh, we had. And uh, what we did was to uh, de create a voucher. We designed a website uh, and a communication campaign uh, focused on the entrepreneurial potential of Kamnik. And uh, the main activity was to uh, create an open call that um, would attract these new businesses in these specific locations. The first thing that we did was to um, actually find owners, talk to the owners of these buildings and convince them to let their spaces for new businesses. And that was actually the, the, the hardest part um, of, um, of everything. And uh, in total, I must admit that we found only six owners that were ready to participate in this program and um, accept new entrepreneurs. So, um, in the open call, we were looking for any business that would be attractive to come to, to come make and would be ready to, to settle a business. So uh, in their end, this entrepreneur would receive a voucher of 5,000 euros um, that he or she can use uh, uh, with uh, purchasing creative services um, to improve the business operation. And uh, here are the awarded businesses. Mm, I'm glad to tell you that actually the, the, the call was open for 
the open the call was open for four months between December 2021 and April 2002. And we got in total 10 applications. Um, many of them were actually very good. Um, for two of the selected entrepreneurs, we were not able to find the space either because the owner didn't want the, uh, this um, tenant or the, in one case, the space was also too expensive. So, um, yes, the three awarded businesses was, uh, is uh, a small shop for vinyl records and handmade artistic craft products. The second one is a tattoo studio and uh, the third one is an escape room. And they all three, th we think, bring a really um, added value to the city. Um, for instance, uh, below you see on the picture uh, Draco, who is running the um, vinyl record shop. He's a DJ and radio moderator, and he already very well connected with the community and Kamek and is organizing and co-hosting festivals in Kamek and providing the music. So he's very active and included uh, in this um, in this community already, and um, maybe on the first day you ask yourself a tattoo studio is it really added value? But it is because you know um, uh, when you decide for a tattoo, you are not going uh, someone who's next to you, but you are deciding for the style, for the artistic expression. So actually, in this tattoo studio, come people from entire Slovenia. So actually, really, it brings new visitors to the city, and of course, the escape room. As you can see in the picture below, is um, something interesting for locals, for visitors, and and tourists as well. So the um, the um, awarded entrepreneurs could choose creative services, and we had done already a pre-selection of creatives that are from the area, from different areas, and they could select with whom they would work, but they could also bring in their own. So what actually, what kind of creative services they choose from? Um, one uh, decided for the artistic conservation and restoration work and consulting for the renovation of the spaces. So that was more about interior design. Uh, and the, the other two entrepreneurs focused on um, one on website design, on social media and web marketing in, in our um, in the escape room and uh, for marketing in general. So that was really something that uh, went off uh, very, very well. Uh, just as an example, for instance, Matea from the escape room, she and her entrepreneur uh, and her creative, they went together also for a hackathon weekend to, to together develop the business idea further and plan new um, business aspects. And uh, that was very successful. So, and she's also very connected already to the community in, in Kamnik with the tourist information center and so on. So uh, maybe just to inform you at the selection criteria uh, for the entrepreneurs were the following. So of course, most important was the contribu uh, contribution to the city center uh, and its revitalization. Second most important was of course also the, the business plan and the financial plan to be realistic and feasible. And uh, the, the third one, was um, if the business idea was complementary to what already exists in the city center, so that we would not have um, a forced hairdresser shop, for instance. So, and uh, the application procedure was very easy. Uh, we offered a lot of additional support during the application, but also all of them got the coaching and we supported them with advices. And I must say all three of them are a great success. Um, we had um, kind of a, a city board with the mayor and the media and it was very well received. And for instance, the tattoo studio is three months booked ahead. Um, it's fully booked three months ahead. So it's, uh, it's really very nice. So uh, I would like to uh, show you also another activity that was directed towards um, house owners that were not ready to let their empty store to a new business adventure, but they, could, they um, at least agreed to have their shop window decorated. So we thought that would be maybe a first step to um, maybe to uh, um, yeah, accept a new tenant in after the time. And also it was uh, in order to make the city more attractive to visitors and um, so, um, and of course, we wanted to showcase also the entrepreneurial spirit of Kamnik by decorating these empty shop windows. 
So in the first place, we did um, a call for companies that wanted to be displayed and promoted. Um, and then a call for creators that were, would like to decorate the shop windows. And each of the creators um, had a budget of 1,200 euros per shop window. So just to give you an idea. So I don't have a before picture for this one, but uh, this was the shop window and the door to be decorated. So you cannot enter, it's just presenting um, this small startup company um, that is uh, producing or working on a new diary. Uh, product. And here on the right, you can see this turkey's blue spot. Um, that's a sticker on the wall. That was also um, one of our communication activities. They are, um, these stickers are in the, in the old town of Kamnik and um, um, has a QR code going to our website, presenting to companies and the creatives, and um, just drawing the visitor's attention to, to the shop window or the, the new business. So here it is actually on the wall because of the cobblestone, uh, but in the other city area, it's on the floor. So here you can see a before and after picture. So on the left side, um, you can see it's a for many years empty shop. Um, uh, it was with old posters and um, stickers. Um, and now and on the right side is the newly decorated shop window. It presents um, um, a young entrepreneur, a young business, um, a designer who uh, designs and uh, sews children, uh, children's clothes. So, and actually she also wanted to rent a space, but we could not find something that would fit into her budget. So we could, so we, I'm, I'm happy that we at least um, promoted her in that way. And uh, I mean, she says mostly over the, the internet um, and social media, but it's um, a good, um, idea, it's a good promotion also for her in this way. And um, just one more example, I think we are running maybe out of time. Um, before and after, um, this is an, another uh, startup company from the, the food sector. They are, are producing on, um, a drink uh, based on chicory, like this old time um, grandmas and children's uh, instant coffee drink without coffee. Um, and as you can see, the, the design also follows this idea. So I think that's um, a very nice um, way to make the city a little bit more attractive. Um, maybe to mention, we actually wanted to do four or five projects with shop windows, but we found only four house owners who would collaborate. Um, and the three of them agreed to have this uh, permanently or for a longer time, and one wanted to have it released after one month. So that is maybe uh, coming to my conclusions. Um, the largest difficulty that we encountered really the engagement of the house owners um, to let the, the stores to uh, new renters to new businesses. And uh, the second one also what would be their expectation so actually they would like to have um, office work not causing any customer traffic, for instance, always paying the rent, I mean, of course, always paying the rent but being like a, a sure business but not supporting for instance a startup or um, a young business. Um, but why did we succeed? I think because um, there's, or in Kamnik was a, um, is a strong local ecosystem for creatives. Despite Kamnik has only 30,000 in, inhabitants, it has a creative uh, hub with a startup support, with um, a maker's lab being prepared. So that's um, really a very good ecosystem that we could rely on with, um, and there's a good uh, entrepreneur uh, potential. Maybe uh, when we started, when we came to Kamnik with this project idea, and when we looked uh, what would be the challenges and how to do it, everyone had thought that uh, the city center is empty because there would be no interest from the side of the entrepreneurs to open the businesses there. Um, that was uh, the, the municipality, the, the actually everybody thought it would be like this. And during the project, we realized that the problem is not that no one wants to set up the business there, but the problem is the availability of empty floor spaces. And um, obviously in the old town city center is such an ownership structure um, that um, is, not in, is, is not inclined towards changes and um, more liveliness of the city center. And uh, I think that's one challenge that we um, have ahead um, that we, we need to 
research and to discuss further is on how to engage owners to change the cities and um, make the cities centers or the cities ready for the future. And, uh, maybe I can already promote. Uh, I know that uh, Roland Murau and our session will uh, thematize uh, this topic in, in his session. So, um, if you have any questions, please ask them. Then uh, this is my um, last slide here. And, um, thanks for your attention. Um, thanks also, Grit, for giving us really the, the clear and open insights how you kickstart uh, that small business in in Kamnik. And uh, I think because uh, it's very important to speak very open and very clear because the problems are similar, the same all over the world. <laughs> and I think if we learn from this insight, we also get more trust and, uh, uh, in this journey of uh, city transformation. And I think after the third presentation of Boyana, we have also have a, a little time to exchange, but in the meanwhile, uh, we also like to remind you to, to go into Mintimeter again for the third uh, third question now. Um, and it's, uh, it's about dreaming. It's about dreaming how uh, your, uh, your desirable future city looks like. Um, I think uh, we will all agree that all points are important, but we want to see what is your most important uh, vision of the future city. Please cho choose two options in the Menti and enter the session. Thanks a lot. And uh, we go forward for, uh, to the more Eastern part of our project partnership to Gapovo. Warm welcome also to Buyana and uh, the floor is yours for presenting the transformation process of Gapovo. Hi, thank you very much Giza for the introduction. Uh, my name is Bujana Georova, and together with Adriana uh, Dimitrova, we are a small cultural organization based in Sofia. Uh, on this particular project, we were working with uh, the municipality in Gabrovo. Next slide, please. Uh, our purpose is always to connect creatives, institutions, and businesses, and we believe strongly as Studio Complex that creativity and culture can foster uh, positive, uh, positive developments. Uh, District 6 uh, is uh, in the heart of the city. The neighborhood's history goes back to the 18th century when it was full of workshops, pubs, and social life. But nowadays, life is pretty much missing in the district with a lot of abandoned places, including empty buildings. We in the municipality believe that in it, it has the potential to be a central district of the city and the central district for small businesses and for creative industry. Next slide, please. Uh, we focused mainly with the municipality on two tools. Uh, here you can see some of the vacant spaces. And we started an open call. Actually, the municipality was responsible for it, so I won't go in much details. Uh, the colleagues from the municipality are also in the session, so if you have any further questions, you can ask them. Uh, the next slide. Now uh, we have three uh, new spaces uh, in District 6, a souvenir shop, a herbs shop, and a beauty salon. Uh, this is our focus. Uh, due to our expertise in the field of culture management with Studio Complex and curation, we made the logical decision to work for the cinema project on the two mobilization of arts and culture cooperation for the revitalization of central urban spaces. Um, its implementation resulted in the cultural event, 10 Days of Culture in District 6, which happened in June this year. The concept was to organize a cultural event which has the means to attract partners and audiences with different backgrounds and to show through the event the potential of, of the district. In the end of uh, 2021, we started talking to all the new partners from different fields of expertise about the program and in March this year, we had the final lineup for the program. 
An important role for the realization of this program played the partnership with the municipality and even more their willingness to help with all means for the successful realization of all program elements. They provided help on spot, PR and communication, technical support, catering, logistical support, and they were all the time there for us. Their partnership sent out a clear message also to the people of Gabrovo that the ambition uh, to turn District 6 into a vivid central part of the city through create creative industry. Now I will um, go through, give you a few examples of the program of this cultural event. Uh, here we have a, a school building in, located in District 6, which is run by a small NGO. Uh, and it, it became the home for nine days for Know How Show How. This is an independent platform for art and design education. And in the time period of nine days, together with nine participants, they explored the potential of District 6 and Kaprovo through design research. The youngest participant was 17 years old and the oldest uh, in, at the age of 61, a professor from the Technical University in Kaprovo. Uh, using industrial waste material from production site in Gabrovo, they created objects and prototypes for District 6 and especially for the former school building in, in this district. Um, a good example was that they created, you can see it on the right picture, sitting opportunities and these sitting opportunities were then used in a small bar which is located in the district. Their conclusion from the whole working period was that the, um, you need more community building in the district and you need also a visual identity for the district so that it is recognizable for uh, locals and for tourists as well. Next slide, please. This is a uh, um, Box Populi, a documentary theater studio. Uh, I think the only one in working in Bulgaria, and they have a very interesting approach to documentary theater. Uh, they spent uh, quite a lot of time in Gabrovo, and they made a research on spot, interviewing locals on the history of District Six, and then they created this theater play called uh, Six Scenes from District Six. Uh, it attracted a lot of uh, visitors and attention, and it was in a way funny, entertaining, but also very informative. And uh, we were especially impressed that older people from the older generation recognized some of the names in the place. Uh, they told the stories then afterwards about them. So it was really a very engaging approach uh, to culture and, and uh, entertainment. And it was also good that Vox Populi worked with the local theater. The actors were from the theater. Next slide, please. This was uh, a six a no point atelier. It's a silk screen studio based near Gaborbo, and they organized a seven days residency workshop for creative uh, people. Um, actually, some of very famous graphic designers and illustrators from Bulgaria participated and had a really good time. At the end, they showed their work around the district, like you see on the picture in the right. And uh, on the left, you see uh, the pop-up show in an also abandoned space in District 6. I think uh, especially this uh, format was very attractive for the younger generation because they saw people like them <laughs> who are working creativity, creatively and they are working in Gabro. Uh, this project especially attracted also a lot of attention from audience in Sofia. People were asking us all the time, I think still for till now, um, to tell them more information about the project because they like very much the result and the experimental part of it. Next slide, please. This was also a very uh, nice project and also very emotional. This is a uh, Reading Sophia Foundation. Uh, the literary tour was led by the poet Albena Todorova, who highlighted some parts of District 6 through poetry. She chose the places which made a strong impression on her and which she magnificently addressed through the words of various Bulgarian poets, some of 
whom were natives from Gabrovo and national heroes for, for the locals. Uh, the unusual experience touched everyone, making all participants get a feeling of life in the neighborhood, from its hidden streets to the market, uh, to the beautiful architecture. It was really an, a very, very intimate and very nice experience for everybody who participated in the walk. Next slide. And here is something uh, we are very proud of, and this was especially uh, came true and was realized with the help of the municipality. Uh, this is a city art in, uh, intervention by Miroslav Djingibi. It's uh, um, in a big building, which uh, is this floor is used for storage from the people uh, who are selling at the market. And this intervention was realized and it's still there and people are making photos of it. It, it has also, uh, I think, a very um, good impact for the district and also it, give, it gives a message for the further development of the city district. So it's a very nice project. Uh, and next slide, uh, these are our plans for the future. Of course, uh, our, my colleagues from the Gabrovo municipality can elaborate more on them. Uh, but our idea is uh, that uh, we will that we want to work further on the development of District 6. Uh, and the Gabrovo municipality is determined uh, to, to go on, which is a very good message to all of us. And uh, they are willing to start a hub located in District 6 with a community ma manager who will work with focus on the development of this district and especially to creative industry and small to medium businesses, which is really nice. Uh, and hopefully we can uh, give you more information about this in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Bojano and uh, Thorsten uh, in the chat already said, yeah, you liked your approach. And if you want to learn more about the approaches, I want to remind you also on the core tools uh, we get it besides encourage people who really are willing to make the cities uh, a wider home for their participants. Um, there are also some tools and methods to apply uh, um, and these tools and methods we applied during the processes um, uh, get it also in the core tools uh, on our website. Thanks a lot. Yeah, um, we start the conversation now with you. We have another roughly 10 minutes, uh, but we have a third question for you. It's on the Mentimeter. Please add what's on your pathway to a um, uh, to your vision to a Macrina inclusive and creative for cities, there are also some stones and rocks. Uh, what's your three important challenges you had during these pathways? So, please uh, also enter in the Mentimeter. Um, it's open. You check. Uh, you can enter keywords. Uh, and we will share these keywords in a cloud afterwards to start the discussions. So, um, uh, but during your doing it, um, I would also, I'm a curious person, like to ask you, for instance, Chris, ah, there is a question from you, Panu. Your, the floor is yours. <laughs> I would like to know from all three uh, uh, presenters if this was the first collaboration uh, on local ground, because uh, it seems like you had the, uh, the uh, initial phase difficulties, challenges, uh, uh, if, if I uh, sum up the, the presentations. And uh, the second one would be, do you have anything in mind how to continue? Uh, the collaboration since you started already something and I would like to know where you are heading. Um, the business of Austria in the city of Leoning, um, in this sort, we collaborated for the first time. Um, but uh, of course, there is uh, plans for the future to further collaborate, um, not only on this topic, but um, on, on other levels too. But um, within this project, we collaborated for the first time, exactly. Giza, do you want to add something? Yeah, um, I'd like to add also that I think it was the first time that we really put in Leonding 
the transformation through culture and creative industries on the agenda of the politicians, mm. I think. Yes. Uh, and uh, for us, it was very important that we we get it, um, yeah, trust uh, from from the stakeholders. Uh, I think it was a back and forth way uh, because uh, in in that kind of transformation process, you don't see quick results. Uh, it's yeah, it's um, a very soft uh, way how to transform the cities, and it's not seen on the first sight. But uh, we are very looking forward, and I want to uh, give the word back to you, uh, Hannah. What's the next steps in Leoning? Yes. So as I said before, we um, developed the local action plan. Um, actually, we want to um, or. Leonding, <laughs> the city of Leonding wants to force on this uh, telephone booth, with, which I showed the photo or the picture, um, because um, in order to present uh, the creatives um, more in the middle of the of the center, and uh, there they want to work together with this creative I mentioned, um, and uh, have the calls open for for presenting the um, creative industries there. Um, and also the ideas of these co-creation workshop, they want to more force, um, I guess, in the next year, right, Giza? Um, ha and have this in a somehow loop, not, not that it's now finished and we have this project ended, but it should be um, continuing also these uh, tell workshops and also the um, show phase. Thanks a lot. Uh, in your case, uh, Brit? In Kalnick, yeah. Um, yes, we, um, I mean, we didn't uh, cooperate so closely with the municipality of Kalnick before, but um, our chamber has one, um, one person in, in Kalnick two or three times a week um, advising um, entrepreneurs and uh, so she knew very well the area and uh, the, the entrepreneurial scene in, in, in Kamnik and uh, so there, there, there was of course uh, a collaboration beforehand and um, um, as I already pointed out, uh, the biggest problem was really that we all had the wrong assumption, including the people from the municipality, because no one ever researched why are the, uh, do not come the new entrepreneurs to the city center. And um, we all, everybody had the conclusion it was because it's so unattractive, because so many visitors are there and so on. So um, I think that was also the, the, the biggest learning of all of us uh, from this project. And um, we are now, uh, we had implemented two workshops. One was really about who all has an interest in the city centers because um, these old owners in the city centers are very um, are visible in the city centers, have a good influence, maybe also on the mayor. And uh, for instance, they would like more parking, they would like to have the uh, no restaurants they, and so on. And, uh, to um, maybe represent also in the discussion the, the, the target or the groups that are not so present, uh, like the visitors or the tourists. So we are having uh, workshops here. We are um, uh, planning also to um, further workshops in the future. Um, unfortunately, the, the city um, of Kamnik didn't decide to implement a voucher like in the next year, for instance, but um, what we did was to adjust their subvention programs that they have at the moment. For instance, in the past, um, they gave subventions to uh, shops and entrepreneurs that are present in the city centers and actually the most points collected those who were the longest time in the city center. Yeah. I yeah. know. <laughs> and so a good achievement was that actually this has been changed and now they are having a new criteria for um, giving the subventions. So uh, really uh, contributing to the revitalization and to the attractiveness of the city is now the, the, the criteria where we collect the most points. And uh, so I'm, I, that was really a, a good result of our project that this has been changed, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, another two minutes. Um, oh, yeah, we can 
just discuss for hours on the topics, uh, but I'd like to ask you also, uh, Boyana, the question, uh, do you have one to three arguments how to win uh, the heart of politicians for uh, transformation? Yeah. I think um, also in our case, we knew, uh, knew uh, we knew the Gabrovo municipality from previous projects, and this is also always a very good starting point, because if you have already worked with them, they um, they believe more in you, and the communication is much easier. And the question uh, how to um, to uh, work uh, the one, two, three examples. I think what we heard in the keynote speech is the best approach to give examples of success stories. This always works because everybody, uh, I mean, politicians don't have the time to get so much in depth of all projects. And I think if you give them good examples, how this approach to work somewhere and what the results were, this is um, the best that you can do. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lisa, can you quickly share the, the results of the mentee? Oshka, can you please share? Yeah. Another, uh, during your sharing, um, yeah, I, I'd like to invite you what's going up next because sometimes you get very unfriendly outlocked of your breakout sessions. So that's the reason why I uh, want to uh, introduce what's next up. Uh, we have another 15 minutes bio recreation break then. And I uh, invite you then to come at punctual at 11.55 to the second breakout session. And I'd like to introduce now Banur also, who is leading um, the, the second breakout session on how to make a sustainable future-proof development concept for cities. And uh, yeah, uh, very much looking forward. So from which countries are we all now? We are from Romania, Bulgaria, Austria, Germany, and Slovenia. Um, um, yeah, one of the nine cities, uh, uh, nations here, get it? So, yes, uh, on, on behalf of SRDA, I will moderate the session all together with my colleague Mira, and uh, we can start now the presentation. The recording has been started. Uh, I will start by uh, giving the floor to, to Dragana Milling, representing the city of Sombor, Serbia. Uh, they will have the first presentation related to the activities done during the cinema project, what initiative and what pilot activities they have been implemented uh, in order to support the creative sector in Serbia and to support the general objective of the project, meaning revitalizing the, the city centers in small and medium sized uh, towns. So Dragana, please, the floor is yours. Uh, you can start sharing your presentation, and I, uh, I will be closing my microphone. Thank you. Yes. Well, I think I think that's that. I hope you see my screen. Yes, we can. Uh, see. Just uh, uh, have your microphone closer to. to uh, the okay. Perfect. <laughs> Better. Yes. Okay. Perfect. okay. We are, we are managing. Okay, hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dragan Emilin and I'm part of the City of Sombor project team. And together with our partners, both from Serbia and from other countries, we have been uh, working on cinema project uh, in order to promote creative industries and revitalize urban areas. And before saying something more about uh, cinema project and results we obtained in Serbia, I would like to give you some short overview of situation in Serbia when it comes to creative industries. Uh, creative industries are recognized as important part of Serbian economy and the government has established Creative Industries Council in 2018 as a special council of the prime minister. And it has brought together a number of key organizations in a good example of how government and business and civil society can work together. And upon their initiative, uh, Prime Minister of Serbia uh, in 2019 uh, created or, or established the national platform Serbia Creates. And you can see the link here on the slide. This platform is aimed 
uh, at promoting and supporting development of creative industries uh, through strategic measure measures, uh, as well as through strengthening of cultural diplomacy and uh, positioning the Republic of Serbia as a country of uh, creative, innovative, and uh, authentic people and ideas. Uh, together with that, we also have a smart specialization strategy of Republic of Serbia for peri period 2020-2027, and it also identifies creative industries as one of uh, pri priority areas for Republic of Serbia. Uh, creative industry in Serbia is mainly composed of small businesses, sole traders and uh, small scale studios uh, that pursue flexible and inno innovative business models. Uh, larger urban centers like Belgrade or Novi Sad or Niš are seeing uh, rapid growth and uh, concentration of creative firms due to their robust infrastructure and distribution networks. But uh, unfortunately, when it comes uh, to Sombor, situation is uh, slightly different. Uh, Sombor is the administrative center of West Bačka district, and it is located less than 200 kilometers northwest of Belgrade. Uh, and it is rec recognizable as a cultural and administrative center for quite a while. It's still <laughs> different situation than in main city and some other bigger cities in, in Serbia. General goal of cultural development in the city of Sombor during the next five year period uh, focuses on the role of culture and uh, how it can contribute to social development and economic progress of the city. And therefore a cultural development strategy of the city of Sombor was issued for the period of four years, 2021-2025. And in accordance with this strategy, there are some financial support for cultural projects, but uh, unfortunately this announcement is not suitable for all creative industry representatives. Some certain parts of uh, creative projects can fit into this, into this uh, proposal. Uh, when it comes to our project, cinema project, the uh, idea was to uh, improve the innovative framework conditions for creative industries. And it has been done on several pilot locations. One of them was in Sombor. And initially the plan was uh, to, uh, to uh, renovate this Grashalkovich Palace, which is a Baroque building in the set center of Sombor. And this renovation uh, should be done by uh, city of Sombor with uh, our own finances. And this place was intended uh, for uh, creative industry sector uh, center and uh, our project partner, RDA Bačka and us uh, were supposed to uh, conduct our, our pilot activities uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this building. Unfortunately, due to pandemic conditions and some budget constraints, the uh, city wasn't able to commissioned the works and the renovation was quite expensive uh, because this Grashalkovich Palace is a historically important building and all renovation must be approved by provincial secretary, a provincial institute for cultural preservation. So uh, due to all this, uh, we switched to offering piloting and other services online. Uh, we did that in cooperation with our project partner from Serbia, RDA Bačka, as uh, one form of uh, support. Uh, City of Sombor has established an online library with financial and legal information that can be useful to creative industries, uh, as well as information on education and training. Uh, this library is located uh, at a link which you can see. It's a uh, Google Drive, so it's freely accessible to, to anyone. A library has several parts, and the essence is, consists of the following units. First one is financial support, where a list of institutions that provide funding for creative industry and their projects are listed. Uh, then we have part dealing with legal support, where all kind of legislation and legal issues, and some are regulations how to register some uh, legal entities. It's uh, listed there. 
And finally, we have one part concerning to education uh, links uh, to various organizations that uh, can be useful to individuals and organizations from the field of uh, creative industries. Uh, our project partner, RDA Bachka, also offers online support for creative industry sector. Uh, they have developed financial tool, uh, which aim was to provide an overview of financial support programs and how to apply support and explanation, as well as to enhance the capacities for the two users, how to better assumption uh, financial support and how to increase the employment possibilities uh, for the users of this tool. Uh, the basic priority actions of this financial tool uh, were provisions of information on current public calls for financial support uh, and counseling and filling out applications and related documents, uh, business plans, and etc. and provision of advisory support in terms of collecting all necessary documentation. Uh, what have we learned so far, or meaning what have you learned during this project is that the best way to help someone is first to determine what kind of help they need. Uh, institutions, and city of Sombra is a government institution, uh, use function the way they used two years ago and creative industry sector is specific and uh, innovative and needs of creative sector may differ. Money is important, but the creative industry sector may be more important is support and facilitation in cooperation with other branches of the industry. And creative sector has extensive specific knowledge and in innovation is innovation oriented. So sometimes it's uh, hard to wrap up what they need alone in all uh, official procedures and decisions. So what we believe and what have uh, we, what have we learned during this project and what is shown in our uh, policy brief is that the best way to the, is first to determine the needs of one side being creative industries here and the possibilities of the other being city administration uh, and then to come to a solution and a package of measures that will satisfy all interested parties. And that's more or less what I have to say about our tool and the results of our project in Serbia. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. We are yeah. waiting for, uh, for questions in the chat or via microphone. So until yeah. I, I have a presentation already prepared <laughs> until uh, some, some, some of our participants prepare their, their presentation. So it's a it's sort of a technical questions. We, all, we are a policymaker in our region. So it's how to create the right mix between the a local cultural strategy that you developed in your in your city and the support service toward the, towards the CI entrepreneurs. Because usually the policymaker, when they create a cultural or creative industry, they are they are thinking about infrastructure. Find, find ways to fund uh, a library, a concert hall, build something, et cetera, et cetera. But in small cities, you don't have so much money, as you already said. You have money to, to support, to be dedicated, it's very, very focused. How can you create a good mix between having a, a policy and put there, uh, make, make, to, make it to serve better the, the interest of the CI entrepreneurs? Well, I think that the first step is to consult representatives from creative industry and to see uh, their needs, even in a small city. Uh, it, it may be even easier to consult them and to have them say before you uh, make a public announcement, how will you declare that funding that you have? So sometimes it's not, it is about money and money is important. But sometimes it's about uh, education or about some examples or about some cooperation with other branches of industry. So uh, sometimes it is easier to facilitate cooperation in that way. So uh, that, that's basically our suggestion first to sit together with a representative of creative industries and to see what are their needs. On the other hand, a uh, city as a government institution is maybe a bit slow and hard to adapt to some innovative solutions. So it is 
actually finding uh, some bridging the gap between uh, the needs of creative industries and the possibilities of local administration and meeting halfway and finding solution that everyone will be satisfied with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, some other questions in the chat or from, from our participants? Okay, if no, we may continue. We, we could continue with uh, our partners in uh, from Moldavia, Victoria. If you're still with us and or not, we can uh, uh, start our presentation on behalf of First Region Development Agency. Hello, I'm I'm here. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm on my way to the airport, uh, but uh, still with you. With, um, could you please start our presentation? I, I will share the screen with, with uh, your presentation. Because uh, I don't have this opportunity, technically speaking. Okay, or we could uh, start our presentation and then when you uh, um, uh, 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 arrive in a in a quieter place. We we can share your your presentation. Is it okay? Yes, of course. Okay. So uh, we already know each other. I don't need to introduce myself. Well, but I will start about uh, the great news with, with regard to our pilot location. So the official launching of uh, the building in which the Innovation and Technical Transfer uh, Center uh, is located uh, will be on the 2nd of uh, December. And uh, this is a, a great uh, pleasure for us to inform you because this uh, location actually uh, is um, a synergy between uh, the national funds, uh, the construction works uh, uh, were done from the national fund, the regional and uh, mostly new local development. And uh, with the help of uh, development uh, partners. And you can see in, as uh, the building looked before the interventions and uh, nowadays. Uh, it was an empty building of more than 6,000 uh, uh, square meters. And uh, nowadays, uh, the first three, three four floors uh, have uh, uh, their uh, tenants found. So uh, on, the sec on the first uh, floor, there will be like smart uh, cafe for young people and um, also co-working spaces. The second floor will is designed in, in such a way that uh, women, uh, young people, and uh, uh, generally speaking, the, the community will have the possibility uh, to work uh, with uh, robotics, with uh, 3D printers and modeling. And also uh, some other project will be located there. With regard to the activities that uh, we have uh, done within the cinema project and, and namely uh, linked to the pilot location is that we had uh, five workshop with the participation, with the participation of uh, creative industries and also uh, young people from um, our region that are just uh, thinking about opening a startup in the field of creative industries. Also, we had uh, free working sessions with young uh, people in the field of uh, design thinking, resource mapping, um, startup designing, uh, pitching preparation, so that uh, they are ready to show their ideas to uh, the potential investors. Besides, we had organized a study visit to Digital Park, Art Core, and uh, Media Core, 
um, these are some of the most important locations in our country for creative industries. And we have studied rare experience, meaning national experience in, the, um, in startups, creation, and uh, also uh, developing that startups. The five videos that uh, we use to promote the creative industries from um, our region uh, were designed in uh, such a way that uh, they are part of uh, one big promotion campaign for uh, creative industries from the North region. It was uh, a, a pleasure to meet young and uh, interesting people who are not afraid to show their talent and to make business out of, of their vocation. In such a way, um, we tried to promote uh, creative industries and also to show youngsters that if you want to open a business also in creative industries and you have the, the talent, then you don't need to be afraid, just start. And uh, the last uh, activity that uh, has been uh, recently organized in partnership with uh, Belt City Hall is the Belt Creative Industries International Forum. I think many of you were invited to participate in this uh, forum. We had uh, both practical activities and uh, some uh, motivational speeches from young people. And the aim of those were, was the same, to, to promote creative industries from our region and to show that creative, uh, creative industries are not located only in Kishinev, but we have a great potential to develop this emerging in industry also in the North region of Moldova. Thank you, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm uh, I'm here to answer them. Thank you, Victoria. You you did a lot of, of work to to promote your city, to revitalize a former in, uh, building, and to bring it back, uh, gave it back to the community, to the community of creators, engaging doers, uh, young students. Uh, motivating talents, developing talents in order to have a future uh, in the local economy. Uh, so I think this this uh, goes very much in line with with uh, what we are doing in, in in our group and what we try to do, creating that support needed for creative, in starting for the let's say uh, a very very young age during the during the the high school. So thank thank you very much, Victoria, for. Uh, in, in, inspiring with your activities and uh, yes if uh, there are some questions uh, from the audience uh, we are we are uh, we could gladly share with you okay and you should uh, hear me well okay so on behalf of uh, west regional development agency christian my name is christian gotia i work as a smart specialization consultant I've been engaged in policy making, uh, regional statistics, and of course, partners in the cinema project. Mira Sisak, my colleague, also engaged in the project as a project consultant in the cinema project. So we're going to present you our, let's say, journey towards helping the creative industries in, in our city. And uh, the most important question is to start with, with why. As a policy makers, we need to put ourselves these questions why we should support creative industry. Of course, we had a very nice and wonderful presentation from Charles Landry, but when you are a policymaker, you need to see if there is a potential when you start uh, creating a strategy. And what we can say uh, regarding to our region is that we are a, le a leading export region. So it's not about the money. We are a leading export region, but somehow paradox in a paradox way, we are a modest innovator. We have very high employment rate, but low rate of entrepreneurship 
due to the presence of multinationals. We are a very uh, high urbanized region, but many of the cities are former mono-industrial gray type cities. And during the previous uh, call on our regional operational program, we had uh, we have been receiving 146 projects submitted by companies that uh, according to their NACE code are under the umbrella of creative industries, but only 26 success rate. And we have a chart where to see where the money have been going. So not in, not in, not so much in software, not so much in multimedia and web design, design advertising, but more in the entertainment and leisure. As our colleagues in Serbia, we have we have a smart specialization strategy with very with few let's say traditional sectors: automotive, ICT, manufacturing, agriculture, and they are providing much of our export uh, share, and uh, they are the the main the, our 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 leading they are representing our leading uh, uh, companies. But in terms of cultural and creative industry, this sector have been recently added, and we did this. Uh, uh, we, we took this decision because we think that if you engage culture and creative industry in your region, you may also have uh, uh, spillover effects in other in other uh, in other uh, sectors uh, who need uh, that need innovation, but also you can bring the increase the quality of life in urban environment. And we uh, made the decision to engage the cultural and creative industry and make the link with the tourism industry. So this was our, let's say, strategical approach. Now, the, the question is how to support, uh, uh, we had this question, how to support the, the, the creative industry. And uh, uh, it was quite a challenge for us uh, as a, an organization because we haven't had any previous experience in working with the creatives. We have been discussing with, uh, with uh, the uh, ICT companies, with automotive, with many, many companies, but not the creative industry. And I think this is a challenge, this is a challenge for all policymakers. Creative industries are small, uh, one pers person only, micro enterprises scatter along uh, the economy. You never know where you might find them. They could be in a co-working space, but they could work from home. They could uh, sell their products online. So it's very hard if you want to create a good policy to get in touch with them. And us as an organization, we have been experienced, we had an experience in funding solid SMEs. So those SMEs that had enough money and, and, and structural, uh, let's say economically, re economical resilience to assure the co-financing rate. We haven't been used to, to provide funding for micro enterprises and startups. And uh, we had to, to find a way to enter into the communities and to see, as our colleagues from Serbia told, to see what are the needs. And uh, we had this policy challenge, what we how we should, uh, where we should uh, invest our time and energy. In urban regeneration, uh, with uh, around, uh, to support CI, uh, creative industry hubs, communities, or to support, uh, uh, and help companies and most of them being startups. And we try to create this type of, of mix, helping both entrepreneurs and, and infrastructure. And uh, uh, what, what, what was our actually uh, our journey? We had to discuss the challenges uh, internally and we also had to, to do some interviews with leading companies from the creative sectors. We have met hubs. Uh, co work places, universities, all sorts of, let's say, doers and leaders in the community representing somehow the voice of the creative industries. And on this journey, we try to find a spot to see if there is a missing gap somewhere in the ecosystem. If what we know as an agency and what and the services that we can provide, that we are providing, if there is a, a missing gap where we can put them and place them. And then we had a lot of internal discussion and finally we thought that we think that we got a solution because during our discussion with them, uh, magic words have been uh, constantly appearing. Funding, finding business partners, Bauhaus Europe, IPR, going international, innovation. So these magic words, we had to transform them into services. And we tried this uh, to create this kind of mix from funding needs to get funding skills actually 
from flying ideas because CI uh, companies always have ideas to innovation management awareness and from develop and design to protecting the IPR tools. And also for those companies that are ambitious, ambitious enough to find international partners and to teach them how to, to manage international relations. So we had to develop for each type of this challenge to develop a, a specific service, a specific content and to have a, 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 a support for them. After we had the, our content uh, developed, our training session organized in, in slides and uh, contents and uh, we, after we had our, our, our uh, a clear image and a ready to use product, we started our online campaign. We had some good reach. We put all our, of our content online on the Canva platform. And we started to promote the links with our presentation and with, our, with uh, the, the things that we can teach the creative industries online. And we managed to have over 295 visitors on Canva only and many, many, uh, and uh, a lot of impact on the Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, uh, channel. We managed to do workshops offline uh, and uh, to meet with, with interesting companies. And just to, to, to provide you an idea of the, our service delivery process, we had five type of trainings, one training on creative tools, one training on funding opportunities, one training on innovation management, one training on logical framework matrix, matrix in order to help the, the, the creatives to, to uh, apply for funding and international business networking. All these five contents have been put online and we had to promote them intensively. Even after we had them uh, ready, we had to go inside the communities to make a case for our, our service and to access this world, world of, of, of creative industries and to, to negotiate uh, to let us in to create a workshop. Because we haven't had any uh, uh, communication with the creative uh, companies, we had to go in the, in the places where they meet and gain access and bring participants to our, our events. And we thought our services and our work workshops as a hook for our follow-up discussion. So it's not, we, we didn't thought that it's useful just to join a presentation or a training. We wanted to have a follow-up discussion with some of the companies to help them further strengthen their business and to provide them uh, the one-to-one -one service and to, to, to be useful as an agency in this type of new community. And we could share, we are glad to share you with some, some good, uh, use cases, some successful cases of, of actors and companies where we made a difference based on the cinema project. One, pro, one case, it's uh, uh, an artist creating children clothes, uh, all production done in Romania, and we managed to, to help them promote their, their, uh, their profile in the, on the international markets. They were willing to go to Japan. And for that, we had to, to dig and find the uh, business intelligence related to the market in Japan. And now we have there a connection, somebody promoting their products in Japan on the Japan market. And now we are working on, we are ongoing working with them to support them to design a Kickstarter campaign. So things somehow are adding up. Uh, we had one, one company, uh, an ICT platform willing to strengthen its business and they successfully applied for the EU fund, IPR fund for SMEs. So now they will have uh, uh, their brand protected at the European level and we're still ongoing working with them to, to develop their services. We have been supporting a CI support infrastructure related to the eligibility criteria, criteria, the future funding that our agency will provide and to see how they will be eligible and what type of project they should develop in order to, to access funding. And of course, we also had a discussion with our local technical university, Politecnica. They are running up a, a very interesting acceleration program for students. And we want to, we, they helped us to share our knowledge on their online library in order uh, to be accessed by, by the students that are in this, in this type of program. So we try to be useful as, as much as we could and to, to build traceable and, and uh, 
cases of, uh, uh, of use cases in order to further scale up our activities. And for the, the, the takeaways, uh, my colleague Mira will, will, will uh, join and say a few words. Thank you very much, Christy, and also thank you to our colleagues Dragana and uh, and Victoria for sharing us their uh, experience. Um, I would like to quote Charles and uh, to say that culture is who you are and creativity is what uh, we can uh, uh, we can become. So starting from this, uh, I think it is very important to to understand. Uh, as our colleagues mentioned as well, uh, the context and the challenges uh, of, of the creatives, because there is a lot of potential when, uh, when we look at the city. Um, um, also, it is very important to listen to, to the input of, uh, of the local creatives, because uh, in this way we can um, sit together all around the, the table and we can prepare uh, different information and uh, uh, different uh, materials in accordance with their actual uh, needs. Um, this, um, after doing this, um, we can uh, design properly new types of uh, uh, CI, uh, CI services for uh, uh, creatives and uh, stakeholders in, uh, in this area. Also, what we uh, noticed when uh, trying to develop and to, to test this, uh, these uh, CI services, um, it is that it is very important to, to offer uh, these uh, services uh, in a flexible manner. So, um, as you could see, um, also our uh, colleagues tried to develop different kinds of materials in uh, to digital formats. We also have had different workshops, trainings, as well as one-to-one -one, uh, meetings. Um, and of course, it is very important the communication. Um, that's why uh, it's important to, to share knowledge and experience that we had um, with our creatives, but not only with them, also with our organizations um, and different other actors in the creative industries sectors. So yeah, these, we think that these are the main uh, key takeaways, uh, what we can uh, draw from our experience within the, the cinema, cinema project. And I would like to thank again uh, our uh, colleagues from, for, uh, for their support and good cooperation in this project. Thank you very much. I give now the word again to my colleague, Christy. Thank you very much, uh, Mira. I will, uh, uh, and, uh, since we have a few minutes left, I propose to have a mentee. There is no online meeting without having a mentee matter <laughs> question. So uh, we already prepared two questions for our session. So let's see as a conclu conclusion and as a feedback from you. Uh, my colleague Mira will, uh, will uh, share in the chat the, the, the uh, mentee link or the mentee number. I will go and uh, and share my screen now. I will be sharing the, the final results. I will, stop. I will start uh, sharing my screen. So you should be able to see the, the, the first question. So our, our uh, I would like kindly ask you to go on menti.com or use the, the link that is in the chat. And uh, we have two questions. You can access the, the questions by uh, dialing up the, the numbers provided by Menti, 268-964629. Uh, and here we have two questions. The first one is, what type of services could bring hope to CI entrepreneurs? And we would like very much to hear from your experience and from your, uh, let's say, from your countries what really made the difference because there are several type of approaches. Some, some are supporting funding skills, some other are supporting basic entrepreneurial skills, how to start a business, some other are, are, are supporting how to create a business plan. We supported innovation activities. So there are all sorts of mix 
and, and services, and we are very much interested to, to see what could bring hope to, to CI entrepreneurs from your perspective, from your experience, or for you as a, as a CI entrepreneur, if there is a case. So this, let's see if we are going to have the, the, the first, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, round of uh, answers. So we have funding, always it's about the money. Yes, money is important. Sometimes ideas are more important. Yes, and let's see what the word cloud will also will also uh, show us. There are three options there. You can send three options for your uh, for your uh, okay listen being listened to. Yes. Simplified funding, yes, very much appreciated. We have been working and all the startups, they were saying, we have, we have been hearing from startups, well, you know, calls are too complicated, too much bureaucracy, and uh, I'm afraid to apply. It's maybe it's not, it's not worth to, to spend so much time in applying and then being rejected. So simplified funding for us as policymakers is essential, but still we are, like a sort of a bureaucrat, we, we funding, public funding without bureaucracy, it, it some, without some of the bureaucracy cannot happen. Networking, yes, very, very interesting cooperation with other. Actually, this is the, let's say one of the most important selling points of the creative entrepreneurs community. When they sit together, we, it is happening, what it is called the cross fertilization, uh, uh, phenomenon. So, uh, entrepreneurs, ideas, uh, banks, uh, I don't know, mentors, uh, doers, uh, companies, they are all work together and sometimes they, they, they manage to develop a new product within their community. Yes, so connection to industry. Very good, very good uh, uh, contribution. We have been discussed, uh, we had several discussions with our partners from Moldova. They were saying that this is what they are, this is their main focus. Try to help the, the, the creative industries to provide services and uh, be engaged with the general industry. So not to be uh, stand, just a standalone company doing something for their own uh, niche, market niche, but bring its knowledge to industry. So either it's about design, uh, making uh, technology have to be more accessible or have a human face to be in order to be uh, uh, fast, uh, to be, let's say, adopted earlier. That's extremely important. Okay, funding, communication, cooperation with other, connection to industry, networking, simplify funding. Now we should go to the next uh, questions since we have 35 seconds left. I hope it goes. What could help the integration of the CI entrepreneurs in the local economy if we can make uh, a few, let's say what's on the first place, the second place, the third place to see if from your experience, there is a, a certain, let's say, a hierarchy. Let's see, four, four, five, three seconds left. Let's see the refresh rate or if we need, we shall go back. Whoa, dedicated events, dedicated department, private support service, I'm very glad. Infrastructure, it is important, second place. I'm, I'm glad that it is not on the first place. It's always easier to 